All right, so in this lecture, I'm going to reveal another tracking secret, and this is dealing specifically when you're using uh, samples from the ESX24 sampler. All right, now anytime you use that sampler, I suggest that you do a backup uh, or make, create a backup audio file for it for your samples. So for instance, I just created a hi-hat sound, okay? Um, once I figured out, okay, this is what I love or this is how I like it, I would then go and convert this um, instrument uh, file into an audio file. Now, the reason why you want to do this is because sometimes, um, you know what I'm saying, there might be an issue when you pull up an old session, right? And you have a lot of different samples that you have put into uh, your sampler and different things like that. So things can sometimes get mixed up. But when you have the audio file intact in the session, if you pull this up, say a little bit later on down the road, if, you know, someone wants to buy it or you want to, you know, rediscover, oh, hey, I found this beat here. It will work perfect for this. You won't have any issues with the actual uh, sound files. And you, you'll, you'll keep the integrity of everything. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this. It's very simple. But um, basically what you would want to do is the track that you want to convert from a instrument track to an audio track, you would go ahead and create an audio track next to it. So come over here to the plus sign, make sure audio selected, push create. All right. Now, after that, you're going to go ahead and open up your mixer. All right. And you're going to scroll down here and there's going to be two things you're going to do. The first thing is you're going to go out. This is usually everything's coming out to the stereo out. Okay. So you have your left and your right signal. Okay. But if you want to basically convert this, all you're going to do is, is, is shoot this to a bus, an open bus uh, track right here. And then come over to your audio file or audio track and go into the insert or input. And instead of doing input one or something like that for your mic, run it into the bus. Now we went into bus 12. So I'm going to go over here to bus 12 and you do it just like that. Okay. And so what we would do is we would arm this and what we could do is we can play this. I'm going to go ahead and put a loop on it just to get the levels. I'm going to play this real quick. All right, so I got the good level on it. And so now all I have to do is arm it and then push record. And voila, now we have an audio file you know what I'm saying? You can come over here and make sure that you don't have anything bleeding over to the left or the right. Okay. Move your ruler tool over. Just making sure. And you can zoom in here like that. All right. And now you have a replica of what you just played, but it's an audio file. So if anything ever happens to this instrument, you got this audio file right here that's secure within your track. And you could also... You know what I'm saying? Come around here and double it up everything or copy and paste. Do anything you would do with your instrument track. The same thing with your audio. You see what I'm saying? So it was a real good uh, trick, a little, real good tip, I would say, in the tracking process. Because like I said, I've had this has happened to me. I would get going with a track and something would happen to the sampler uh, or the files. I, either I moved the file around or something like that when I was making some other sampler uh, kit or something like that. And then I open up the track or the session file and I'm like, yo, my beats are all messed up. So this is a very good tip or trick that you want to apply to your production. Hit me up if you have any questions about this. If you don't understand it properly or if maybe kind of things went over your head a little bit, you can hit me up and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks for watching.